there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft or welcome back if you're a regular viewer. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest episode of my midweek sewing chat. So I've got a few different things to share in today's video. I've got a completed sewing project address to share with you. I also wanted to update you on how my current sewing whip is going and share some progress on that. And I've also got a couple of knitting projects I wanted to talk about too that I'll pop at the end of the video. I realised I haven't talked about any of my knitting projects for quite a while on one of these midweek sewing chat videos, so I thought it'd be nice to update you on what I've been up to on the knitting front too. So a bit of a mix in today's video, but as usual I'll kick off with what I'm wearing today. And today um, I jumped out of bed and I just knew exactly what I wanted to wear today, um, which is quite rare actually. I often um, find myself um, struggling to decide. I've obviously got quite a lot of clothes now because I have sewn quite a few things over the last few years. Um, but today I really fancied wearing a pinafore um, because now the weather's getting cooler. I do love a pinafore dress and I haven't worn one yet since the weather has got cooler. So I'm wearing a handmade pinafore dress over a handmade top and I'll talk about the top first. You probably recognise this pattern because it's one of my favourites for winter. It's a real staple for me. And it is a top from this book here, which is the Stretch Book by Tilly and the Buttons which is a book full of patterns for sewing with knit fabrics. I really like this book and the Freya top is my favourite pattern from NR. Find the line, line drawings here. So the Freya top is quite a close fitting jersey top and you can also make it as a dress with an A-line skirt. You can make it with a long sleeve like I've got on or just above the elbow sleeve. And it comes with this sort of classic mock neckline and um, which is the version I'm wearing today. And I really like this neckline actually because it's not too tight and not too high so it's not restrictive at all but it still keeps you really cosy. And there are a couple of other neckline options included in here for the Freya too, like a proper full roll neck version and a cowl neck version as well, which is really nice, but I do love the classic mock neckline. So it's just a really nice comfy top. Um, yeah, it has negative ease in, so it is quite tight fitting. And I just find it perfect for layering up at this time of the year. In terms of sizing, that's the only downside of the Freya. Um, it's, this book comes in Tilly and the Buttons old size range, so it goes from UK six up to the UK 20 and the largest size is designed for bust of 46 inches so it hasn't got their biggest size range ever but I do often recommend if you're looking at this top and want a top pattern with a slightly more inclusive size range another great alternative is the Nico top by True Bias um, it's very similar in terms of the shape and style of it um, so it's a great alternative I think that pattern comes with also a sort of sleeveless longer length dress option too but the actual um, sort of classic top version is really similar to the Freya so it's another great option but I never made it myself because I find the Freya fits me really well and I like things like where the shoulder seam sits and how the neck fits I just find it really comfy so I've never felt the need to buy the Nico top but it is another good option and I've got a whole range of Freya tops some of them are quite jazzy and in bright fabrics but today's one is a little bit more mellow this um, is actually also my only Freya top I have that isn't made in cotton jersey this one is made in a tensile jersey it's a really lovely ribbed tensile jersey i'll hold it up so you can see it by meat milk and i got it for minerva and i'll link it down below and it's really really lovely actually and i really would like to make more um, versions in this fabric because it's really nice and comfy to wear and it's quite slinky and soft so it's a really nice fabric and they have so many lovely colorways of this available i've been tempted or i still am tempted really by a really lovely jaw green color they've got and they've also got some sort of blacks and navies that I think would be really good too. But this is the only version I've made in this fabric to date. Um, and I'm sure I will make another at some point. But it's lovely and slinky and cosy to wear. And because it's tensile, it's nice and breathable too. So it's really comfy. But I'll link that fabric down below. It's in this colour, it's called Shell, I think. So it's sort of a off-white creamy colour. And I think it goes quite nicely with the denim of this pinafore. I'll pull my hair back so you can see the neckline. It's just really nice and comfy to wear. I don't like things that are too restrictive around my neck. But I really don't find the fray it is. And I made this top in a size 2, I think that's the equivalent of the UK size 8, which is designed for bust 32, waist 26, hips 35. And I'm um, bust 32, waist 26, hips 36. But I've never bothered grading out because it's quite stretchy fabric it's made and I've always found it's been fine around my hips in the straight size 2. But it's just a really great staple and I love this colour of this top and I think I'll be wearing it a lot this winter. Um, yeah, it's just really nice and comfy to wear. And I got that um, underneath um, this pinafore dress, which I made um, using this pattern here, which is the Closet Core Fiona sundress pattern. 
and I've only made this pattern once to make this pinafore but I really enjoyed it and I really think I should revisit it and I made this as sort of a winter layering piece but it is called a sundress pattern I have seen some lovely summery versions I think one I particularly liked that I saw going by on Instagram was made out of brochure anglais and it looked really gorgeous in like a white colour I think but yeah it's a really pretty pattern it's a bit different to your average pinafore because it's quite a fitted pinafore shape so yeah, these are line drawings. So it's quite a fitted pinafore shape with princess seams and quite a straight skirt. And you can either make it as a midi length with these side slits, or you can make it as a shorter um, knee length or above the knee length version. And it's got strapped to the shoulders, which are kind of on the chunky side, I guess. Um, and then there's two back options, either a sort of straight back and straight straps, or this pretty sort of dipped back with these cross straps. Then it's also got pockets. Um, it's got a sort of pretty band that goes around the top here. And I think the pattern says there's loads of opportunities for top stitching and um, with the pockets and all the different pieces put in place. So it's got a really nice silhouette to it. Um, so this is by Closet Core and a lot of Closet Core patterns do come in in their extended size range, which I think takes you up to a size 30 or a 32. But unfortunately, the Fiona sundress pattern isn't yet available in that extended size range. So it just goes from a US zero up to a 20 with a larger size for bust of 46 inches. It's a really nice pattern, actually. It's definitely one, I think they give it three out of five um, in terms of difficulty. And it's definitely one to try if you want to up your skills, because there are quite a few little fiddly bits to it. And when I made my version here, I made it in this um, stretch denim fabric, which I think works really well for this pattern, because it does say it's designed for woven fabrics, and you don't have to have stretch in them. But I think the bit of stretch in this denim does add a bit more comfort, because it is quite tight-fitting. I'll stand up a little bit so you can see a little bit more what it looks like on me. And I actually made a toile of this before I cut into my denim fabric. I just used some um, sort of um, hessian type fabric um, that I'd got that was going to be a non-wearable toile just to check the fit. And I did have to tweak it a little bit around the princess seams and take it in a little bit around the waist. I think I originally made it. Where did I put the pattern? Where's it gone? Here it is. I think I originally made it based on my measurements, so I think I made it with a bust size 2, waist size 4 and hip size 6, which is where my measurements put me at, and then just tweaked it a little bit from there based on the twirl, but I didn't need to change the sizing after that. But it was definitely worth making a twirl just to get the right fit on it, and now I'm really happy with the fit. Um, in terms of the back, I went for this neck, this sort of back here, this sort of straight, simple back, just because I thought I wanted it to be quite a classic wintry pinafore, so I thought that would give more of that look. It was a fun sew, actually, I really enjoyed sewing it, and I do love princess seams, I think they give a really nice shape, and it's got quite nice big pockets, so that's quite handy too. Oh, this stretch denim fabric came from Fabric Godmother. I'm not sure if they have this particular one still in stock, because I got it quite a long time ago, but I'll link the Fabric Godmother website, if they, and if they have got some stretch denims um, in stock, I'll link them down below. I just think it works quite well and does make it a little bit more comfy than if I made it out of denim without any stretching. I'll turn around so you can see a little bit of the back in case you're interested to see how that looks. Hopefully you can see a little bit of it then and I'll pop up a picture too so you can see what it looks like on. And as you can see I went for jeans buttons um, which I think kind of finished it off nicely and does give it a sort of a denim -y sort of jeans style look. Um, so it's just quite a nice comfy casual pinafore to wear and I don't get out that often but when I do get out I always really enjoy wearing it. And as you can see, I think I went for, um, I think I might have gone for somewhere in between the knee length and the mini length version. So just kind of above the knee. Um, and I quite like that length. So it's a nice comfy one to wear. And I haven't actually teamed it with this top before, but I quite like them together. So that is what I'm wearing today. So that's what I'm wearing today. But now I'll move on to talking about all of the things I wanted to share in this video. And the first thing I wanted to share was the dress I finished this week. And it's a dress I made using this pattern here, which is the Davenport dress pattern by Friday Pattern Co. It's a really pretty woven dress pattern and I've made it before and in particular I made a wintry version, I think last year, that I really enjoyed wearing. So I had in mind that I'd like to make another one of those. But yeah, I'll show you the line drawings. It's got quite a lot going on, this dress. So like I said, it's a woven dress pattern. It's got this tiered skirt that's quite nice and swishy. Then it's got a drawstring waist that pulls in and gives the dress shape. And with sash pockets. Then the top has an interesting finishing here, you can see there's ruching around the neckline and that's um, created by an elastic that sort of pulls in and it means you don't need any sort of zips or fastenings on this dress because the elastic just stretches over your head when you put it on. Then it's got this little yoke, this sort of pretty little sort of shoulder yoke here and a yoke at the back and a little flutter detail on the shoulder which is optional 
and it's got quite full volu voluminous sleeves with a little ruffle at the bottom again. So lots going on with this pattern. It's a bit of a involved sew just because there are lots of different pieces to put together. But I do find Friday Pattern Co instructions really good. So it does take a while to put it all together because of all the different pieces, but it comes together really nicely. And it's got a really good size range on it too. I do find Friday Pattern Co um, release their patterns in quite an inclusive size range. So it goes from a um, extra small up to a 7X, which takes you up to a bust of 60 inches. So it's a pattern I wanted to revisit. And I had a fabric in my um, stash that I bought earlier this year from a D stash account. And I'd kind of been umming and ahhing over what to do with it. And then suddenly I just thought, actually, that would make a really cool Friday Pattern Co Davenport dress. So I thought I'd get on with it and start sort of cutting up and sewing it before I had second thoughts. And I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. I'll show you the dress now. And you'll have seen this fabric and my plans if you watch my um, weekend sewing chat video, which I published the video where I talked about a few other items I was up to last week. I'll link that in case you haven't checked it out. But here is my Davenport dress. And I made it in this, oh, that's the back, I think. <laughs> Here's the front. I made it in this really pretty um, viscose fabric that I got from a D stash account. I really love it. It's got this sort of navy blue, almost indigo coloured base with this really cute tiger and floral print on, which is yeah, a bit of an interesting combination. It's a bit random, but I really like it. And I love the colours in this fabric. I love the contrast of the darks sort of midnight blue with the gold and the little pinks and the lighter sort of cobalt blue colours. I just thought it was a really pretty fabric. So yeah, here's my Davenport dress. It's got the waist ties. I added on the little sleeve, flutter sleeve. You'll see um, on the inside, um, on the inside I've used this navy fabric, it's another viscose fabric um, because I didn't have quite enough of this fabric to actually cut out all the pattern pieces. So any pattern pieces um, I didn't, they were not going to be visible, I cut out in this um, navy fabric. It's just a viscose jelly fabric that I got from Minerva. It's one of their, I think it's one of their core range um, fabrics, so it was quite reasonably priced. It was like $5.99 a metre. Um, so yeah, I just thought that would match quite nicely if a little bit did show, but also well, yeah, well, you wouldn't really see too much of it. So. The inside yoke is made in the navy and also the pocket facings. I'll show you inside one of the pockets is in the navy too. And it just helped me just about squeeze out um, the fabric that I needed for this dress. See, I'm really happy with how it came together. I've got the ruffle on the bottom. I did shorten the ruffle um, from the pattern a little bit. The pattern actually, when I sewed it up, I found it came up quite long on me, almost sort of midi length. Um, so I think I took at least three inches off the ruffle to bring it to more above the knee, which I feel suits this dress better on me and I think even the model on the front of the actual pattern envelope it looks shorter on her too so yeah I definitely found it came out quite long on me and I'm five foot six so I'm not really small so I was quite surprised at how long it came out on my original version but yeah I've shortened it slightly on the skirt and then for the sleeve I took in the sleeve quite a lot that helped me also squeeze um this out of the smaller amount of fabric I think I had just under two meters of the fabric um so I made the sleeve a narrow which I really prefer um on me and I added on just a really simple elasticated cuff rather than the ruffle. Again, it did help me squeeze it out of the smaller amount of fabric, but also I just prefer the simple ruffle just because I think this dress has got quite a lot going on with it anyway. So yeah, I'm really pleased how it turned out. It did take me a while to sew. I'd sort of forgotten about how many steps and processes and there's so many different bits of gathering to do on it, but I'm really happy with how it's come together. And I haven't actually got a picture of it, but after I finish this video, I'm going to go and try and get a couple of pictures so I can pop one here so you can see what it looks like on. And in terms of sizing, I made the smallest size of this dress, um, which is slightly smaller than my measurements on the waist and hips. Um, it does, the extra small is right for me on the bust. My waist and hips are slightly larger than the extra small. But when you look at the finished garment measurements, the chest measurement for the finished garment measurement, the extra small is 41 and a half inches. And the hips measurement is 46 inches. So there's loads of room in this dress. So I found sizing down the waist and hips has been absolutely fine. But yeah, I really... Um, enjoyed sewing it I'm really pleased how it turned out and I think it'll be a really great one to wear for winter with some um, black tights and, and black boots and because I've made the sleeves narrower it means it'll be easier to fit a cardigan over as well so that should work well so that is my completed project I'm glad that I found a use for this fabric because when I originally bought it I was really indecisive about what to make so yeah I'm glad I've been able to turn it into something now the next thing I wanted to share was how I'm getting on with my latest sewing project and at the moment I'm currently working on a twirl of a pattern that I really want to make in pop fabric at some point in the future but I thought I'd check the fit first and the pattern is this one here which is the Bowery Top by French Navy. 
It's a pattern that was kindly gifted to me by French Navy um, without any obligation to share it or make it up or anything. And so I've had it for a while now and I've just finally decided to give it a go because um, I think it's quite a cute little top that I think I can see myself wearing quite a lot with a pair of jeans. I'll show you the line drawings. Do I have the line drawings here? Here they are. So it's quite a boxy fit um, cropped top with a slightly curved hem and dolman sleeves that are cuffed and buttons at the back and an optional patch pocket. And I think it's designed to be fairly relaxed fitting, um, not fitted by any means. And I really like French navy patterns. So I've been keen to give this one a go. And if you've watched my previous uh, midweek chat videos, you'll know I bought this really lovely fabric here from Simply Fabrics. It is a cotton fabric. It's really soft and snuggly with this lovely sort of large scale check print and these really, really pretty colours. And I was thinking of making a bowery top in this fabric. Well, I've been sort of umming and ahhing over it slightly. But because it's such lovely fabric, I didn't want to cut straight into it for the bowery top. I thought I'd give the bowery top a try first um, in some twelve fabric just to check. I'm definitely happy with it before I cut into this fabric. I have uh, one and a half metres of this fabric and I had mentioned before about how I can maybe make a dress with it instead because I did love the idea of a dress. Um, in this pretty fabric but um, a couple of people mentioned about it might be really hard to get the pattern nail the pattern matching on a dress because I've got a limited amount of fabric so I think I'm going with the bowery top if it works out but at the moment I've been working on my twirls so I thought I'd show you how I was getting on with this one so I've just used a couple of fabrics I found in my fabric remnant suitcase I can't even remember why I had these fabrics I have a feeling the white one um this is the white fabric I'm using as one of the fabrics I have a feeling this came from me making a tooth um fairy cushion for one of my children so it's been sitting around for quite a while because i made that quite a while ago but i had just a couple of scraps of sort of cotton fabrics that i thought were maybe similar in terms of um sort of weight or in terms of drapiness um to this fabric so it'll give a kind of approximation of how the top might look if made it in that fabric they're a bit lighter weight these fabrics but i'm hoping it'll be enough to give me an idea of whether i'd like to make the barry top in the proper lovely check fabric so here is my twirl of the Bowery top, how it's coming along. Here's the front. I've added on the patch pocket, so I thought I may as well to see how where it's sat and if I might want to move it or not include it at all. So I've got the back and the front, and at the moment I've just started getting the placket sorted. And the next step is to put the bias binding around the neckline, and then the placket gets finished after that. And it's been coming together really nicely. I really like French Navy instructions. I find them really nice to follow. Although actually the pocket's designed to be added later in the process. Um, towards the end of sewing the top I think so that you can make sure you're happy with the placement the pattern piece does give you an idea of where to place it as a sort of suggestion but I decided because it's a twirl I just go with the suggested placement and then I'd know for the final version where if I wanted to move it because I thought it'd be easier to put it on as uh, put it on the front piece before I sew it all together and then it might get a bit more fiddly so I sewed the pocket on first and then did the other step so yeah here's my little pocket in white and it's got a red front and a white back so yeah this may well not be a wearable twirl but I think it's quite cute in the red and white and like I mentioned before it might be nice if England were playing to wear it because they have the sort of colours of red and white. Actually I did have a suggestion in the comments um, about whether I could actually make the top and um, front top half red and half white to make it more wearable and I thought that's a really great idea but these two fabrics are slightly different weights the white is a little bit lighter weight than the red so I wasn't sure if it would hang right if I had half on the front with a stiffer red fabric and half with a lighter weight white fabric so I've just gone for the red front and the white back and I'll see how it comes together and it's a bit of fun if nothing else um, I haven't actually found any buttons I'm going to try putting the buttons on just to give the full effect of it so if I can find some little red buttons I might put them on just for fun and see if I can make it wearable but I'm just quite enjoying having a go and I love about twirling that you can kind of just sew and not worry too much about it because it's all about getting the right fit and checking if it's right for you so if it doesn't come together perfectly or if it doesn't look quite right at the end I don't need to worry too much because then I'll know what to tweak for the final thing. And for my twirl I've gone for the um, size A. So French navy um, or at least this French navy pattern goes from a size A up to a size G. So the largest size is for bust of 41 and 3 quarter inches so it's not the biggest size range ever. I've gone for the size A which is designed for bust 32, waist 24, hips 34 so like a lot of patterns my bust fits that size my waist and hips are a little bit larger but again a bit like the um Davenport dress when I look to the finished garment measurements there's loads of ease in the waist of this one actually I don't think the hip measurement's too relevant because I think it sits above your hips so I've gone for the smallest size I think there'll be plenty of room in it it'll just be interesting to see how it comes together so I'm hoping to finish this one this week so I'll be able to show you my completed wearable twirl next week maybe take a couple of pictures ch check the length and things and get some opinions on whether it looks fine as it is or whether it needs some adjustments and whether I should go ahead 
and use this fabric for the next version but I'm quite enjoying sewing that one up that is my current sewing whip so that's what I'm working on at the moment on the sewing front and I'm really looking forward to doing a bit more on that twirl of the barry top this week but I thought in this video as well as talking about what I've been up to on the sewing front I'd also share a bit about what I've been up to knitting wise recently because like I mentioned at the beginning of the video I don't think I've shared much of my knitting on here recently so I thought you might be interested to hear what I've been up to because I have been yeah, knitting away in the evenings and I've been working on one particular project and I've really enjoyed this one actually and it's a knitting kit by We Are Knitters. I do love a knitting kit and I've made a few We Are Knitters kits and this is one I'd had my eye on for a while um, and then it was and there was a good deal on the website I thought so I thought I'd just get it and love how their kits turn up with the yarn and the pattern and you should just get started and the kit I've been working on is um, for this sweater here it is their pink Cosmos sweater and I'll pop a picture up so you can see what it looks like. It's a bit of a different one for me because it's quite a lacy stitch sweater and it's one of their more advanced knitting patterns. So that's something different for me too. It's a really pretty lacy sweater with sort of a dropped shoulder um, and yeah, this lovely lacy print. I'll show you a little bit of one of the um, charts from their knitting book. There's quite a lot going on. So you can see there's lots of different symbols there and um, quite a lot to sort of keep track of you have to concentrate quite hard on this one to make sure you don't lose track of where you are um, which I've quite enjoyed actually I've enjoyed that concentration and um, yeah working on something a little bit more challenging so this um, sweater is knitted up on five millimeter needles which I think is quite a nice size not too fine not too chunky and the wool that's used for this sweater is their cotton yarn which I really like because um, I mentioned before I find that actual real wool um, it itches me it irritates my skin so the cotton yarn is perfect and I really enjoy knitting with it too I've got all of it here so I can show you actually um, here it is it's kind of fine but not too fine and it is really nice to knit with and I have made um what well, make I'm making my pink cosmos sweater in the black colorway of their cotton yarn I thought that would be a color that would just work with a lot of things in my wardrobe and I've made good progress actually it's one that's knitted up to front and a back and two sleeves and I've now actually knitted up all those pieces and what my next step is I've sort of pinned it all together and I need to try it on and check the fit and um, I went for the medium size because I often find my tension is a little bit tighter than the We Are Knitters tension when I've done the tension square so I always size up I generally size up when I'm making their pattern so I need to try it on now and see if I need to make any adjustments like to sort of lengthen or shorten the sleeves of the body and that sort of thing but I'll show you um, how it's looking and I'm yeah really enjoyed working on this one actually it's been a lot of fun so here it is you can see the really pretty lacy stitch on it there's a either the front or the back they're both the same and then the sleeves have the same sort of lacy stitch on it too and it's all pinned together ready to try on I just need to get a pair of jeans on and try it on with a pair of jeans because that's probably what I'm going to wear it with and um, I'm not sure how the neckline's finished I know I need to seam it all and there's quite a lot of seaming because it's a front and back so I've got the side seams and the sleeve seams and everything to do I'm not sure how the neckline's finished whether you just seam it and then leave a hole for the neck with a cast off edge or whether there's anything else added there I need to have a look at that I know the um, cuffs and the um, the bottom of the sweatshirt how, well they, they were actually designed to be finished in a garter stitch I think at least definitely the bottom was designed to be finished in a garter stitch I think and I decided to use an, a um, rib stitch instead because I thought it would sort of suit it better so I've gone for ribbing there instead of a garter stitch but that's the only modification I've made otherwise I've knitted up the straight size medium and I really enjoyed knitting I was actually quite sad when I finished the last line on my second sleeve because I really enjoyed this pattern so I think it's probably one I'd quite enjoy knitting again but I'll have to try it on and check the fit now and see if it fits me right and whether I do need to make any adjustments before I start thinking about any other versions or anything but yeah it's just been a lot of fun actually doing a bit more of a challenging knit I've really enjoyed the lacy stitch so yeah I need to go and try this on and figure out um, the fit and if I need to make any adjustments and then I'll um, be back on at some point and share with you once I've seamed it all up and it's sort of ready to wear um because it's a cotton yarn I guess it's a bit more lightweight than a kind of cozy wool but I think if I wore it in the winter and I wore it with a t-shirt underneath I think it would still be pretty cozy so I could wear it as sort of a winter jumper probably and that would work quite nicely I could maybe even wear it with like a frayer top underneath like a mock um, neck frayer top underneath potentially um because it's designed to be a little bit oversized it won't be tight fitting I don't think so yeah I really enjoyed that one actually um I do love wearing this kit um and I'll link the details down below in case you're interested it's been a really fun and pretty yeah one to knit and I have liked being able to concentrate on that more complicated stitching so 
that's my latest knitting project I've been working on so I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about that as well as what I've been up to on the sewing front and that's everything I think I've got to share in today's video so thank you very much for watching as ever if you've enjoyed the video please do give it a thumbs up and I'm back hopefully on Saturday with another video so I'd love it if you would join me then too so thanks again for watching and yeah hopefully see you on Saturday bye